and it's good for your parents and your family or whoever you care about their opinion mm -hmm. to be a good critique it, it is. of what you're doing. Cause then, uh, but also to be a supporter. Yeah. Those things are important. And yeah. like when they would ask those questions, I'd feel like maybe I wasn't writing it clear enough and it kind of would frustrate me. So, you know, um, it was really hard. But then I started sharing more of it with my teachers and they would like tell me how good it was. And, you know, and they loved I like I give tons of my poems away to teachers as a kid. I like continue to do that. Oh, and so, I love that. yeah, that is adorable. yeah, they, they loved it. So like I had their support. So then I felt like, well, somebody likes my po poetry and likes what I was doing. So even though I maybe oh. not had the, com I'm not saying this is a bad thing for my parents, but maybe I didn't, I may not have the full support or maybe they didn't yes. understand yes. poetry at home, but I had teachers who did. So that, yes. that helped. Yes. You, you found that in the, I mean, and there's like each one of them played their own role right yeah in giving you most what definitely you have today, so oh yeah. yeah so I mean like I said I had several teachers that were wonderful inspirations so I mean that's what continued made me keep writing so um, and then now you know with the, the the birth of the internet and then you know uh, social media uh, blogging yes. I mean it's really given a platform for writers to expose themselves yeah and I would say I mean I think you, you probably feel the same. Mm -hmm. Somehow, the overall world politics has further flamed writing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, to, yeah. To an extent. Most yeah. definitely. So, that that's great. I love that, you know, you had that support early on because it means so much. It does. Absolutely does. Um, so... I was trying to read through your bio. Now, you said you've you've been published in different uh, poetry platforms, and I'm trying to read back through it again. Have, you said you have published a book, or? Yes, 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 yes. I have published a book. Uh, do you want me to tell yes. you yeah, a little yeah. about it? Talk about your book. Okay. Uh, I'm proud to do that. You know, it's you know, it's like how a book is like your baby. Oh, right? totally. You can almost hear <laughs> me smiling as oh, I yes. tell you <laughs> about my book. Uh, so it's called uh, my book is called uh, Shelling Peanuts uh -huh. and Stringing Words, and uh, it it's a book of poetry, of course. Uh -huh. And I published it. Um, I I launched it on. Uh, Christmas, um, that's my birthday also. Oh my gosh, that's then, so cool. Uh, it actually it actually came to the market, I think it was the first week of January uh -huh. uh, this year. Uh, it's a collection of poems. Uh, it's, it's divided into eight subsections, like we almost very often do, mm -hmm. uh, Ariana, and just like clubbing our poetry into different themes. Mm -hmm. And um, the themes range, so like I said earlier, there's there's a section called Remembered Routines. Mm -hmm. It's about day-to-day -day routines. And the first poem is actually Shelling Peanuts. <laughs> cool. uh, uh, and it was actually last to last two years ago. It, it was written in my living room, sitting in front of the fireplace and shelling peanuts oh. with my dad. Well, oh, that's just the perfect setting. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> uh, then there's a section about relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something called the embroidery of questions. Mm -hmm. um, that talks about relationships. Uh, there is a there is a there's a section about just death and yearning and mm -hmm. dealing with death of close ones mm -hmm. um, in your family. There is one about it's called an abridged world. Uh, it's about basically confronting mortality mm -hmm. um, and counting bridges and borders. And then the last one is uh, about. Uh, it's more the Mary Oliver inspired. It's on seasons and nature and the changing seasons in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, then there's one about people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's on portraits of different people. It could be somebody I saw walking down the road or mm -hmm. it could be a character from an old story. And then the last one um, is just about things. Like there's a poem in that which is called Keepsake. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother likes to knit. A lot, and she knits a lot of blankets, so it's actually on on a blanket knitted by my, oh, so by neat. my mother. Oh, so neat. Very cool. It sounds like you kind of hit on all aspects of life. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, <laughs> yes. And it, and remember, this is my first book, so it took a. It, it probably is a collection that came together over the last five, six years. Oh, wow. um, that sounds that great for a first collection. Oh my gosh, it's like so much better than the first one I put together. <laughs> you get a lot of topics. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> 
My first yeah, one. It I was thought, okay. I probably had a lot of time thinking about it. So. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Like, mine is pretty simple. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yours, it sounds great. Um, is it available on Amazon? It is on Amazon. Uh, it is actually on Amazon Prime. Uh -huh. I would love for you to read it. I'd like to send you a copy, actually, and get your feedback on oh, it. Oh, that would be I great. I will truly respect your feedback. Oh, I would love to. I mean, I, I like all your sections that you broke it up into. I mean, I mean, you, you wrote a poem from sitting in front of the fire shelling peanuts with your dad. I mean, that's just like the perfect peaceful setting. <laughs> I mean, how much better does it get than that? <laughs> I mean, you know, and then, of course, you know, in my area, we have a lot of Amish community and a lot of people who garden and live out in the country. Oh. So then someone might write a poem about snapping the green beans, you know, when you grow green beans and people Amazing, snap right? them. Yes, you know, so exactly. so you know the exactly. so that way it's kind of where the cultures is a little different. They'd be talking about or working out in the garden with their mother or their grandmother or on the exactly. farm. So you know, or <laughs> baking cookies. You know, I mean, so, I mean that's just a kind of culture because it's it's a little bit um, more like okay, our town it's it's great. It's so charming. So it's like a, I love it's, it. it's, I'm going to I'm going to come visit you one oh, day. Oh, you should. Sure. It's I'm like sure you're not very far. It's. From me. A, it, it should, it's like a step back in time. I mean, I mean, it's it's such a charming little town. So, and to see the different, you know, if you see Arthur compared to like Chicago, I've been in Chicago a few times, and I felt like a mouse. So, I'm sure. <laughs> so, I'm sure you did. <laughs> so, you know, I've grown up in small towns. I mean, Chicago is a great place to visit. Um, they've got great museums. And, um, but yeah, I, I'm just imagining you know, the different ways you can, you talk about changing the seasons of New York and it's actually colder than, you know, further north you go. So, you know, yes, it is. and you know, you deal with what they call it the Windy City. So, I mean, I'm just thinking of all the different dis cultures just between Chicago and Arthur. So, I mean. Imagine. Yeah. <laughs> it is, well, but, uh, I mean, it is true, right? The United yeah. The States is, is very much like India in that way that you know no one place is like the other, whether it's, uh -huh. it's your accent or your food or how you, how you live your life uh -huh. or uh, where you focus on. I mean, there's so much of cultural diversity in oh. the United States as well. Oh, most definitely. So, um, what you else? know, I thought of something that uh -huh. I must share with you, Ariana, if you permit me. Sure. One thing I forgot to mention about my, my book, uh -huh. uh, which is a cool thing, which I think you love is as I was writing together and you know right it takes around six to eight months to really get the process oh, yeah. going totally and I happened to this is your like your point about this the internet has helped us with so many opportunities mm -hmm. that we probably did not have earlier I happened to see a painting of a particular girl uh, or a woman or a lady in the in the um uh, in the New York area, mm -hmm. and she she belonged to the same area that I belonged to in India, mm -hmm. and somehow it, it I literally like I was walking back home one day and I from a walk in the evening and I said hey you know how cool would it be that I reach out to her and ask her if she'd like to illustrate oh, for my book yeah and I just sent a blind. Um, message to her uh -huh. and I got a response and actually when you get see my book I'll definitely send you a copy awesome. you will see that each of the eight sections uh -huh. has a painting oh my and an illustration that she did for each of those sections so that her name is, is cool. Japneet Kaur but I did want to mention that was really nice oh, wow. um, and it brought out a sisterhood aspect of two people just connecting blindly that's awesome. Something. So you just happened to see a painting you liked as she did, and then you actually contacted her, and she agreed to illustrate. That's just awesome. Right? <laughs> yes. I, I feel very proud of that story, and we are now friends. Yeah. And, and we still haven't met each other, by the way. Not oh, even wow. once, but she's the one who's my illustrator. That's wonderful. I mean, I mean, how you see something you like, it, it isn't always, like, definite that they're going to, like, agree to do it, or they might be busy. So, I mean, that's just awesome. Right. Right, right. I'm, I'm very. I, it gives it gives me goosebumps just thinking about that well, story. Yeah, that is very cool. That, that's maybe fate was just working your way that day. <laughs> that's awesome. Correct. Right. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yep. Wow. Um, is there anything else that you would like to talk or um what you do um that you would like to tell uh, our listeners? Let me think. Well, related to poetry, I've I'm I've recently. 
uh, become really fond of narrating or just mm-hmm. reciting my poems. I think I, I know I sent you an yes, example. Yes, exactly. I think uh, I'm going to it's... attach it with the show, so people will get, actually get okay. to people will get to hear it. So yes. Oh wow! All right, yes. Yeah. So I've I've, <laughs> um, I've developed uh, a passion for doing that, and mm-hmm. I just do that for myself. Sometimes on a Saturday afternoon, I just choose something I write and record it for myself. Whether I mm-hmm. use it or not is secondary. And uh, I don't know if you know, but like Poetry Foundation from the the, the Poetry Foundation in Chicago has mm-hmm. a has an option in the SoundCloud. You can go and record your poem and oh, tag wow. them for Neat. like take a classic poem and record it. So I'm huh. I'm doing a lot, couple of those as well. That's so cool. it's just a fun thing I like to do. Yeah, and another like work practitioner worship. Sure, it gives me a lot of self satisfaction. Well, doing and that. and when you put it out there, you're also reaching another audience as well. So I mean, I got into right. I got into reciting some of my poetry lately. And I created a whole other simple, very simple podcast. It's just my spoken poetry. And um, so that I can reach other people. And I feel like with today's technology, people are always on the run. I mean, people are either reading like on their Kindles or they're listening to things. So I think if we narrate and speak our poetry, some people would rather listen to it than read it. So I think you're getting maybe two two different audiences. Right. Right, and, and I, you're 100% right, and that's actually how it started, because I travel a lot for mm-hmm. work, and I'm addicted to some podcasts, and uh-huh. I'm listening to them all the while at airports and in airplanes, and I'm like, oh my god, like, let's make sure poetry is available more to listen yeah. as well, right? Not yes, just most read. definitely. That's great. That's very cool. Well, I, I wish you luck right. on continuing to do more of your narrating, then, because like, I literally just started doing that in March. <laughs> yes, I I didn't do I haven't done it for very long either. Except I still remember going back to my parents as a child. You know how schools would have uh-huh. recitation competitions. Oh yeah, <laughs> and my dad would stand me up, and I still remember O oh, Captain, my Captain. Oh and yeah, the, <laughs> anci- the the ancient Mariner. Like I can remember in my head, his making us. <laughs> Yes, I I took speech (laughs) classes, yeah. (laughs) Public speaking, I took speech in high school and public speaking in college. You did? Yeah. Of course you did. Of course you did. That's why you're doing what you're doing. (laughs) Yeah, it's fun. Um, Like I said, I... I, mostly where I started my practice um, getting my poetry, reading it, was actually for church. Um, my old church that I go, went to, I would create a Christmas poem every Christmas and recite it on our Christmas Eve service. And now I've done it oh for the last... Yeah. I love it. I know. It's so it's fun. And then I actually have done it for the last couple of years now at the church that I'm working at now. So um, it's pretty neat. So that's that where I amazing. got my start. Yes, that yeah. is amazing. What a, what a, uh, I mean, it's a neat way, right, to make an uh-huh. impact and do what you do the best. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's funny. I'm, like, we are chatting. I just, today is my husband's birthday. Aww. And, get, and of course, uh, guess what my gift to him was for his birthday? It oh. was a recited poem called Aww. Arguments. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Arguments. <laughs> oh. that's, that's got to be, you, you said you guys live far apart right now? No, he's he actually left his old world. And oh, okay, good. I was gonna say that would be so hard to. Yes, oh, that would be that would have been difficult living so far apart, you know, and so far away from each other. So it was, but it it did create a lot of poetry, Ariana. Oh, so I, I bet. <laughs> I can I can only imagine. <laughs> Okay. Um, I don't want to keep you on here too long. I'm just trying to make sure I touched on um, everything. Is there uh, other places online that our listeners could find you besides Amazon? They can look up your name and find your book, Shelling Peanuts. Um, uh, Shelling Peanuts and Stringing Words, right? That is right. Shelling Peanuts and Stringing Words. Um, there's a. I have a YouTube channel by my name where I'm now posting my narrated poetry oh, awesome. uh, as well. Great. And then my TED Talks, TED Talk is of course available okay. online. Too. Okay, we'll have to share your link on our uh, Night Moves Radio uh, Facebook page to show your uh, TED Talk, and maybe I'll, I'll look up your YouTube channel and we'll uh, try to post that too. That is great. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you, um, you know, again talking with us today. I, I was like really, I, I, I know that I'm kind of like I was really 
thought it was cool that you did a TED Talk. Like, I watch those online all the time. And I was, like, telling uh, Josh, uh, I'm more into poetry, so I handled the interview tonight. I was like, she did a TED Talk. You know, I was like, you know, that that's cool. Oh, thank <laughs> you, thank you. I'm you know. proud of it as well. Uh-